Welcome to Water Science with the Western Virginia Water Authority. Today, we are going to look at the effects that we have on the watersheds in which we live. I'm standing in a watershed right now. And now, and now. A watershed is the area of land over which water flows on its way down to a water body. And because water flows downhill, whatever happens on the watershed affects the water. In order to show you how our everyday actions can have an effect on our watershed, we're going to use this watershed model. A model is supposed to resemble the real thing. So we have houses and neighborhoods, mountains, we have some construction, maybe you have construction near your school or near your home. We also have factories, farms, and don't forget, streets, roads, they're all part of a watershed. And remember, that it's hard to live in a watershed without having some effect on that watershed. Today, we are going to focus on the erosion that can happen on the watershed. Erosion occurs when wind or water transport soil, rock, or dissolved material from one location to another. We are going to focus on how sediment is transported down to water bodies. You might experience this most in your everyday activities. Let's say you are out hiking and you would really prefer to avoid taking those long switchbacks that zigzag up the hill. So you cut the trail short. Well, eventually the plants will get so trampled that they die. Their roots that hold the soil in place die, resulting in loose soil. Then that loose soil can erode down the hillside. The same result would come from mountain biking and choosing to bike wherever you wish, rather than sticking to the trails. Again, the result is loose soil and then erosion of that soil down to the nearest waterway. Sticking to the trails will keep that soil from eroding down the hillside. That includes if you are on an ATV, horseback riding, or walking your dog. Keeping your dog on a leash will help it stick to the trails because even dog claws can dig into that soil and loosen or trample plants. Speaking of plants holding soil in place, what if a lumber company chose to cut down all of the trees? There would no longer be any living roots holding the soil in place. That loose soil would then run downhill as erosion and pollute the water. If some trees are left, then their living roots can effectively hold the soil in place and erosion or even landslides can be avoided. So some trees should be left planted. Additionally, forestry operations can and likely will plant a subsequent crop. Those trees will grow up and their roots will take hold in the soil. Farms also have a role to play. Between growing seasons, the fields lack the plants that would hold the soil in place. This means that loose soil can run off into nearby waterways. However, if a riparian buffer or strip of plants is planted between the farm and the water, those plants' roots will hold the soil in place, and the plants themselves can trap eroding soil as well. Riparian buffers are a good idea in any place where the land meets the water. Construction sites must also prevent erosion. Construction typically results in the complete removal of vegetation and exposed loose soil. Construction sites have to follow regulations, which are rules that will protect our water. Otherwise, dirt runs down into the pipes that remove storm water from the streets and then carry that water directly to the nearest river, creek, or stream. You may notice a variety of measures used to stop soil from washing down storm drains. Silt fences are commonly used to stop soil erosion as well. These fences have tiny holes in them that allow the water to pass through while holding the soil back. You may be wondering, what's the big deal? Isn't dirt at the bottom of creeks, streams, and lakes anyway? Well, there is some, but all of the soil that got here into the water didn't get there naturally. This is human-caused erosion. In fact, human-caused erosion 
accounts for 10 times more soil in the water than would have been there naturally. This erosion muddies our water supplies, making it more expensive to clean water for human consumption. The soil that settles to the bottom fills in the nooks and crannies where small invertebrates live. These little animals are fish food. If these creatures no longer have homes, then the food web is disrupted. Remember that there are ways to protect the water from erosion. And what happens on the watershed affects the water.